Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Um, a few things. <laughs> Firstly, thanks for all the help with the um, personal messages thing um, yesterday evening. Um, it was getting on my nerves, basically, and due to the amount of help, I sorted the problem out. Um, problem's not me, unfortunately, so there's nothing I can physically do about it. But um, obviously there's various platforms, social media platforms. YouTube is just one. Um, Facebook is another. And um, the problem basically seems to be linking the two, which just doesn't work. <laughs> it's not very easy to do at all. Um, as far as YouTube is concerned, again, um, you know, there are many platforms that allow you to access YouTube, but they allow you to access it in different ways. Obviously, it's designed to be accessed on a computer, yeah, where you have full functionality. Um, so that's its basic design principle. If you come at it from a phone, you're coming at it in a limited way. And the software on the phones is obviously not as elaborate as the software that, say, is available on a, a Mac laptop or on, you know, a, a Windows-based PC or something like that. Um, so you get limited functionality, and therein, I think, lies most of the problems that people may have is, is coming at YouTube from limited platforms. Um, and there's many and varied. I mean, if you think about the um, software that lives on the phones, there's several different versions of that for a start. There's also older versions of the same software that's on newer phones. Um, and basically, the only advice I can think of is that um, if you're coming at it from a platform that isn't a computer, which could be a laptop, a tablet, the various types of phones, things like that, um, the way to get full functionality on YouTube and allow you to do all the things like personal messages and stuff like that um, is to actually try and find a desktop version of the app that you're using. <clears throat> From what I can gather, because I don't do this sort of thing, most phones and tablets and things like that, uh, they get at YouTube via an, app, via an app. And within the settings on that app, you can actually request a desktop version of the app. And that will give you the functionality against YouTube. Um, that's as far as I'm going to go on that because it's an area I know very little about. I have a full-blown computer which I use a lot. I use my phone for making phone calls <laughs> and texting and that's all I ever use it for. So it sits there collecting dust most of the time. Um, obviously it's a, an absolute bonus to have a mobile phone when you are doing just that and you're out and about things like cars breaking down you know changes of plans rearranging meetings yeah it's brilliant for all that sort of stuff but um for all what i call computer-based stuff i use my computer so i don't get hassles basically so that sorts that out and in the main everybody who sent me a personal message it was received and it should have had a reply <clears throat> And again, if you sent a message and didn't get a reply, it could be that when you sent the message, you were using the desktop app, but then on a different platform, you didn't get the message because you weren't using the desktop app. That's a guess, not a statement. <laughs> That's a guess. I'm only surmising the differences between how the apps work and how the true original software works. Yeah. So that sorts that out. Uh, second thing, I got presents, yeah, I'm not turning it over because uh, it's got my address on it. Nothing spectacular, <clears throat> but it is, because it's a present. So thank you very much, Rose. The slow boat from China, finally docked, <laughs> and Boseman Pat has just delivered these. So, unfortunately, I've now got no excuse whatsoever for plants with no tags on. Um... This goes back to Rose's um, giveaway, and um, basically she wanted to do thank you things and said she wanted to send me a present. So um, <clears throat> my idea was get some tags, and I like white tags. White tags with black writing, I can read at a distance. And at the moment out here, 
I got tags of all different colours. There's white ones, there's yellow ones, there's green ones, there's red ones. And quite honestly, the red and the green ones, these sort, I've got to pick the flipping things up and do that. And that's when my pen was running out, so you still can't read it. <coughs> I've got new pens as well. So I've got no excuse now to get everything tagged and um, stop guessing. <laughs> I'll get on with it. But you can see what I mean, you know, when, you, when you've actually got a white tag with black writing on, I can read that at a distance. I don't need to pull that one out. And most of the shop-bought tags, unless they have a me memory associated with them, they'll get replaced with my handwriting that, again, <clears throat> because it's my handwriting, I can read it from a distance. I mean, when you get tags like that, I know that's not an orchid, but, you know, it's clearly printed in black, on white, I can see that from miles away, but it doesn't apply to all shop-bought tags. Um, right, and the other thing is uh, really the point of the video. I've always said that suggestions for videos are appreciated, and this is one of those. And this won't apply to everybody, unfortunately. I wish it did. But somebody asked me to bestow the virtues of being a member of an orchid society. And what would be the point in joining? <clears throat> well, it'll mean different things to different people. There are members of our orchid societies that don't grow orchids. They come along because it's a social event. It's a gathering. It's a meeting, yeah? Where everybody can come and have a chat, discuss things. <clears throat> Mainly orchid related, obviously. It's an orchid society. Now, I belong to two. The Wessex Orchid Society is, um, they meet in a little village called um, Shawford, which is near Otterbourne, which is near either Eastley or Winchester, depending on which direction you're coming from. But it's um, up in that region of the south of the UK. And the other one I belong to is the Bournemouth Orchid Society, which, which meets on the outskirts of Bournemouth, um, Bournemouth town. So um, that's very close to me. That's about four miles away. The other one is nearly 40 miles away, but it's nearly all, the journey is virtually all dual carriageway or motorway. <clears throat> so although it might be 40 miles away, it don't take 40 minutes. Well, not the way I drive anyway. <laughs> My car's got a sticker on the front that you can read in your rear view mirror. It says, get out of the way. <laughs> And I am joking. <laughs> right, so orchid societies. Um, most of them have regular meetings. Most of them are monthly meetings. The two I belong to are monthly meetings. Not all meetings are meetings. Some of them are actually social gatherings elsewhere. Um, but to go through one of them, because the two that I belong to both are organised in a very, very similar fashion. You will get a Christmas function, yeah? Well, not all orchid societies do that, but both of my do, mine do, where we have a nice laid-on meal in a hotel, you know, and we all put our posh frocks on. Yes, even me. And um, we all go and have a wonderful time. Um, both of my orchid societies have a summer event called the Garden Party, where we descend on some poor soul's um, premises <laughs> and lay tables out with masses, always far too much food, and, and just have a social gathering. And if that person grows orchids, we get to look round their grow space. That doesn't always happen, but, you know, that's that. So that's two social events. Most orchid societies will run a coach trip once a year sometimes twice a year, where you get to go and visit something. <clears throat> could be a big orchid nursery, it could be a big orchid show, but, you know, things along those lines. Um, then the meetings themselves normally consist of people bringing some plants in, either because they've got a problem with it or because they want to display it. They want people to have a look, make comments, things like that. And a lot of the societies have competitive tables where you can enter your plant into the competition as such. See how well it does, you know, all that sort of thing. <clears throat> They'll also normally have a speaker at a meeting on an orchid-related topic. You know, uh, the one we've got coming up soon is the orchids of Borneo, much of which has been filmed in situ. And boy, am I looking forward to that one because <laughs> I know quite a few of the sorts of orchids that come from that region, so it's going to be of great interest to me. Um, 
We have talks on various things. Um, we've had somebody from Kew Gardens came and gave a talk about how they look after their orchids at Kew and all the history behind that and their scientific work that they do. That was very interesting. We've got a talk coming up on our native orchids from an area not too far away from here. The sort of place, well, I've already visited um, it and did a video. <clears throat> I must admit, I didn't find many orchids, but uh, perhaps after this talk, I'll know where they're hiding and I can go and find them next year. So that's the sort of talks. Um, costs, many and varied, I'm sure, but these two, one of them, a single membership, is £22 a year. And for that, you get your tea, coffee and biscuits or whatever free. Yeah? So that's all you pay. Um, the other one is only £10 a year. But you pay for your tea, coffee and gorgeous homemade cakes. <laughs> Blow the biscuits, I'll have homemade cakes. <laughs> nice choices and things at really silly little prices, hardly worth bothering with. So those are the sort of expenses. Um, obviously things like coach trips and stuff you're paying at cost, you know, it's the, uh, the number of people divided into the cost of the coach plus any entrance fees, you know, and that's what you pay. But um, the one that I'm organising for next year is to the RHS show in London. Um, it'll end up, the coach will cost about £20 a head and the entrance fee, I think, is about £6, something like that. We get a discount for being a um, RHS-affiliated society, so we won't be paying much to get in. And quite honestly, from Bournemouth, you know, I'd like to see you get into central London and back for that sort of price. So, you know, you, you, and you don't have to drive. You just sit back and enjoy the scenery and <laughs> watch all the traffic jams in London. Oh, great fun. Um, yeah, so social events. Um, but in addition to that, you've got access to growers. And quite honestly, when I first joined, that was my main principal goal, was to find out who the good growers are that have been doing it for many, many years and what sort of things they grow, and are they of any use to me? Because some aren't. Because they grow things that I don't. So they may have a wealth of knowledge, but it doesn't you know, it doesn't serve a purpose for me because I don't grow those types of orchids. But if I ever decided to, I know where to go. So <clears throat> that's really what orchid societies are all about. But primarily, they're a social gathering of like-minded people on a regular basis. And if you've got one that you can get to reasonably easy, I highly recommend it. You know, you might... <laughs> Depends on the orchid society. Um... Both of the ones I belong to are very a friendly, very friendly bunch in both cases. Um, one of them is far more organised than the other one, but the one that isn't quite so well organised is is just in a friendly way, if you know what I mean. You know, you don't you don't find yourself getting annoyed because somebody's a bit flustered or they've done something in the wrong order. It doesn't matter because you know it, it's friends, if you know what I mean. So. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, highly recommended. I, I don't see any reason why not, unless it's just too far and the travel, travel is prohibitive or too expensive or something like that. But, you know, if you've got one that's not too far away, give it a try. <clears throat> um, the Bournemouth Orchid Society, um, you, you have to run the gauntlet. If you're a new member, when you first arrive, you don't know it's coming, but the chairman starts doing the notices and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Oh, and we've got uh, a new member tonight. Can you stand up, Brian, please, and show everybody? <laughs> and you have to sort of, you know, it's your first time there. You don't know anyone or it's unlikely you're going to know anyone unless you've gone with somebody. And suddenly you've got to stand up and, and be seen by everybody. But it's important to know who new members are. Otherwise, there's just this strange person walking around that you haven't seen before. So you get to find out who they are, you know, what their name is. And um, quite honestly, you'll, there are a lot of members of Orchid Societies that will make a point of aiming for a new person and introduce themselves, especially if they've got a role on the committee or something like that. You know, so uh, anyway, Orchid Societies, um, if you haven't, 
give them a go. If you can't get at one, well, there's not a lot you can do about it. You know, um, as I say, I, I, I travel nearly 40 miles to one of mine, but I do it relatively quickly. And that one, I don't go to all the meetings, and that includes the one today. Two reasons. My car's still a bit iffy. The man hasn't looked at it yet, even though he said he would. That's the trouble, isn't it? You either pay a fortune for some sort of garage to have a go at things, or you get the guy across the road to do it. And the problem with the guy across the road is he's very, very good. It's actually getting him to do it that's the problem. <laughs> it's actually... I'm going to go over there and drag him out of his house soon. But, um, you know, he works. And he works hard and he works quite long hours. And he's working with cars and trucks and things like that. And chances are, when he comes home and it's cold and it's dark, he wants his tea and put his feet up, rather than go out and start working on cars again. So I was quite happy to let him wait till the weekend I, I'm, I'm you know I mean one day this week I went out to start the car and it wouldn't start so what what I was going to do I didn't do now the next day I went out there and it started fine <laughs> so it's an intermittent problem that hopefully he'll sort out but as a consequence of that I'm reluctant to head off to an orchid society 40 miles away from home and then find when I come out of the meeting the car won't start so I won't be going in addition to that, the talk that would be today, this afternoon, is exactly the same talk at the one that's five miles away in two weeks' time. So I'm not going to miss the talk. It's a repeat. So I'm not really missing anything, am I? I still get to see it. Anyway, that was a request to have a chat about orchid societies and their benefits. I don't see any downsides. You know, everything's got pros and cons. Well. I can't see anything wrong with orchid societies. The only one thing I will say, I've heard at some other societies, I don't believe I see it much at the two I belong to, they can be cliquey, where you get little groups of people who've known each other for years and they huddle and they talk to each other and don't really talk to anybody else and it's difficult possibly to get in on those conversations and things. I've certainly noticed it, noticed, it, noticed it at other societies that are nothing to do with orchids. One of them was so bad I left. You know, things were going on where things had been organised and people weren't told. You know, so you, you, you come in to say a workshop or something and everybody's chatting about the event that they did the previous weekend and you didn't know anything about it. Um, so I don't belong to that sort of thing anymore. Um, but you will get people that have known each other. You know, I mean, I think our Bournemouth Orchid Society has been going about 40 years and there are people there that were like founder members and they're still there. They've known each other for years and years. So they're obviously a lot closer than a new person coming in. But in, it's normally a friendly bunch. You know, you, I always say you, you, you get out what you put in. If you want to sit in the chair with your arms folded and not speak to anyone, then you'll get back exactly what you give. If you get off your proverbial and get round and talk to people, when they're looking at the plants, start a conversation. What do you think about this one? People will talk. You become orchid buddies, so they work, you know. But you do have to put some effort in yourself. You can't expect everybody else to do everything and you do nothing. It doesn't work like that. So, uh, orchid societies, that's it. Um, I haven't got much to do today, but I have. I've got nothing to do out here today, <laughs> but I've got stuff to do elsewhere. And I've got one thing I'd love to do today, but it is totally dependent on the car starting. And I'm reluctant to go anywhere in the car at the moment, because if the guy decides he's going to work on my car and I'm out in it, he'll just assume it's fine and he doesn't need to do the work. So I'll have to get him going again, if you know what I mean. So, uh, yeah, so uh, thanks to Rose for my tags, my labels. I will make a point. Next time I do a pot watering, every pot, doesn't go back on the shelf unless it's got the appropriate tag and if it's got a funny coloured tag it'll get replaced or if it's got one I can't read it'll get replaced. The only tags that are liable to get left are ones that are already on white tags that I've written myself or the yellow ones 
um, mainly because the black writing on the yellow tags works. Um, that, that's okay. But anything else that's lurking around here can either be a new tag because it hasn't got one or a replacement because I can't read it. And uh, get, get myself a bit organised out here. I know in the main I can remember all my orchids, but I do get caught out sometimes. <laughs> I, I can remember that Dendrobium not that long ago, and for the life of me, it was a really good plant, and I just could not, for the life of me, remember what the hell it was. And it's annoying. And what it actually was, was a new acquisition that I'd just forgotten I'd got. That's all it was, and it didn't have a tag in it. It had one of those horrible flippy floppy tags from the nursery that probably got dumped. <laughs> So uh, thanks for that Rose, appreciate it and um, slow boat from China finally docked and uh, I got me Prezi so thanks a bunch for that and thanks for all the help with the uh, personal messages that's all sorted now as far as I'm concerned um, those that want to can and in the main everybody sends me a personal message gets a reply yeah um, if you don't get a reply it's probably because of the platform you're using is not receptive if you see what I mean it won't be because I haven't sent it yeah so if you are expecting a reply that's important to you and you don't get one stick a comment on a video saying I sent you a personal message have you replied and I'll get on to it um, and in one particular case, which was a particular problem last night, um, the reply that I sent a person, which they'd specifically asked for, they never got. Now I got their message and I did reply. So basically I cut and paste the text out of the personal message and stuck it in their comment. So they've got their reply now, one way or the other. I'll always put some effort in. If you ask stuff, whether it's in comments or personal messages, you will get a reply. Yeah. Right, see you again next time. Enjoy your orchids. I'm not enjoying mine today. I've got other things to do. And it's a horrible day today. It's just drizzly, dull and cold. Horrible out there. I bet I've got no heat in here. Oh, I'm up to 19. That'll do. <laughs> well, it's going to have to do. I'm not doing daytime heat. As long as I get that differential between the night and the day of 3 to 4 degrees C, I'm comfortable with that. I prefer a bigger differential, but that will do. At least I've got one. Orchids are not too happy with totally constant temperatures day and night. They can do with that difference. It, uh, I don't know, it just helps their metabolism. Just makes them feel more comfortable. As long as it doesn't get too cold at night, obviously. Right, see you next time then. Thanks for dropping by.